Hello everyone, welcome to another session for Know Your Exam series from Shomus Biology. And in this all session of videos, we are going to talk about different exams which are important for your career. And we are talking about the exams date and obviously other important information regarding the exam with the exam pattern. As well as at the end, I always provide exam preparation tips. So stay tuned and watch the video. <laughs> an exam conducted by TIFR NCBS and it is known as JGE Bills and this exam is very famous for uh, directly entering into some prestigious research institutes in India and there are three type of courses that can be conducted after this uh, qualifying this exam one is uh, the PhD course another one is the integrated PhD Another one is the research only MSc. Those, these three things can be easily conducted and easily done. So PhD courses will be funded by government and different organizations. While integrated PhD will be a five year course, five, six year course along uh, like, like at the end of the course, they will be given PhD along with the MSc degree. And uh, MSc research only is a separate and it's kind of experimental type of uh, subject and experiment type of course which is being conducted by only uh, DBS there are many institutes joining uh, with this exam that is uh, conducted by TIFR and those are NCBS then uh, there is DBS then there are institutes like CCMB in CDFD from Hyderabad and ISAS that is Indian Institute of Science Education and Research from ISAR Pune, ISAR Kolkata and ISAR Bhopal. So all these research institutes they take the result of this TIFR NCBS joint in France and then they conduct their own interview session. Eligibility criteria is very basic for uh, PhD entrance exams. It is MSc, MTech or any MSc equivalent exam in the field of sciences especially in the field of life sciences any discipline can work and for integrated phd it is uh, the bsc or bsc equivalent and uh, with at least 55 percent marks during the bsc similar for msc in france uh, for phd in france as well msc or msc equivalent uh, m farm or m tech which are msc equivalent with uh, 55 percent above uh, in the msc career Exam structure is uh, very simple, very straightforward. There are four separate parts for the exam. Uh, part A is the general science, uh, then part B is the physics, then part C chemistry, and part four can be either mathematics or life sciences. All this part, they ask uh, 15 questions you need to answer. And every single questions uh, among the 15, first 10 questions are of one marks, and the last five questions are of two marks. So for every single part, you have 20 marks so 20 into 4 equals to 80 marks total 80 marks question exam commencement date uh, is approximately December or every year and they conduct this exam uh, in two separate installments in a, in a day uh, there are two separate parts one is for physics chemistry those backgrounds and the second half is for mathematics and life science background so if you're appearing for mathematics and life science background the time taken is normally two hours so it is 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. While for chemistry physics, it's from uh, 9.30 to 12.30. Negative marking is there. Negative marking is every for every wrong question, the negative marking is half. Because you know there are two types of questions. One is a mark one, another one is a mark containing two. So in both the case, the, the mark will be deducted is half. Okay, so the cutoff will be not very much. Actually, for the written test, the cutoff is very less, like approximately 40%. But they don't take only the exam marks uh, to judge your position. They will take the mark of the exam. Along with that, they will take uh, your track academic track record. They will also check uh, your interview skills. Like during the interview, they'll ask you questions. And they'll also ask you questions from the research proposal. So they will check your ability to defend the proposal. So keeping all this thing in your mind, they will cumulatively put a merit list. That's how they will check. 
the candidates shortlisted from this uh, exam uh, is like it's not like an exam when you qualify the exam you are going to be able to join for the phd but it is an eligibility criteria so once you qualify the cutoff then there are so many things that they actually uh, take a, uh, account for and especially another very important thing is that while you are applying for this post they will ask you to write a research proposal so you need to actually build a research proposal and uh, send it to them and during the interview session they will check your marks in the written exam as well as they will scan all the documents for your uh, for studying your uh, BSc and uh, MSc scores along with that they will also ask you different questions in the interview and actually it's very important to, to write a very strong research article which you can defend well uh, during the interview session because you know many people uh, for most of the people it may happen like they qualify during the entrance exam the written exam but uh, the problem happens during the interview so I'm going to make another video regarding how to prepare yourself for any other scientific uh, PhD entrance interview preparations but for this one you must, must know that uh, they need a better understanding of science in the very first place there is uh, not much uh, bound feature about the number of seats because you know there's no fixed amount of number of seats either because the number of seats for PhD can be 15 to 20 or 25 similar uh, in case of integrated PhD it can be 10 to 12 uh, integrated PhD seats but depending upon different institutes okay they can divide uh, this uptake of the different individual based on the capacity of their corresponding institutes so the limit I told you is for a single institute so there are like seven eight nine different institutes are out there so there will be plenty of vacancies uh, and it all, uh, absolutely depends on the institute that they are taking you exam fees normally is 650 uh, actually 600 for male candidate and for female candidate it's only 100 and if you send uh, the fees through post then it will be 650 the level of difficulty of this exam is uh, moderate and the questions that will be asked in this exam are solely based on your basic understanding of life sciences so it's not like you need to have extensive preparation or something you generally don't need anything and especially if you find the TIFR and CBS site you will see that they are also telling people that you should not do that you should not prepare in that way uh, you should always focus on uh, your basics to, to prepare your basic strong that means whatever thing you understood in your graduation and post graduation just know that and go for the exam they don't want anything special anything fancy there they just want hard dedicated people uh, people who want to be and make it in the, into the research field that's why they mostly focus on both the, the marks in the exam as well as the actual interview although the exam cutoff is very less but still the interview is really important and really going to be the game changer for you so it's always recommended that the, you should not think about what kind of question that they will ask because they generally don't ask any flat question from your test textbook so it's not recommended to read and uh, learn from textbooks but prepare the okay. another common question is can it be attempted uh, from different disciplinary field uh, the answer to that is yes uh, anyone from different field also can apply for this post it, that doesn't mean that only uh, graduates in life sciences can apply graduates from physics chemistry mathematics can also apply that's why they have this three separate subjects and actually their biological science question paper contains question from physics chemistry as well as general aptitudes along with biology so yes you can apply from physics background you can apply from any other background that doesn't matter uh, it's not going to add any extra credibility if you are belonging from life science background or so it's only the idea that that you may not know any basics you may not know like you may not know any biological techniques and stuff like that on any practical knowledge of that you just need to have a strong understanding of the topic that you are going to do and the focus of doing something good in the field of research that's what they are going to test now there are some tips for the CA, this this uh, exam that is conducted by TIFR and CBS so I'll say that uh, TIFR NCBS exam does not require any special preparation scheme so you don't need to go for any coaching institute to take classes 
and uh, all these things that you know of like there are question papers books out there that people are opting and, and forcing you to buy those are simply pseudo reality and uh, it's it's a desperate attempt to make you buy those things and, and things like that because you know it's clearly stated in the C in, in the website of uh, NCBST IFR that simply you don't go for all this trap you simply read the basics and if your basics are strong you don't need to do anything else just come for the exam and then go for the interview that's what they need but what I can say is that you should prepare your physics chemistry as well as mathematics a little bit you should train those part a little bit before applying to uh, NCBST IFR because there will be 20 marks physics 20 marks chemistry questions and those physics chemistry questions will be mostly from the plus 12 background so I'm going to give you a small idea about the question type mostly if you go for the general aptitude or general science questions those are something which you can't prepare by reading some books just before the exam because it will test your knowledge of uh, basic sciences whether you are into science if you read things from before if you like new scientific news you probably answer those questions now come to the second part of the physics the physics part uh, is a little difficult it may be a little difficult to all the people if you are belonging from life science and probably uh, you don't have physics you didn't have physics in your after plus 12 so that can be a little difficulty if you have physics in your graduation then this uh, physics part will be really easy the question will be little like uh, the the plus two advanced plus two a little bit of it like a je level question in the physics while chemistry is very easy chemistry is almost straight and very basic questions are there from the chemistry so if you do well and read well from the plus two level chemistry book simply ncrt syllabus will do fine and life sciences and like the biology which is also from plus two level so also from uh, the ncrt biology book it will be fine it's also the the easiest portion among rest of the three and obviously if you're from this background then then it's not going to be a problem for you so you can opt for like uh, there are different NCRT books for chemistry and biology as well as for physics but uh, for physics a little bit difficult problems may be there so you may consider some other advanced JE books for physics preparation for that uh, on the other hand for general aptitude you can go for RS Agarwal book and if you solve others RS Agarwal book like a uh, few question papers all the different types of questions at least two one two questions like that uh, you'll be able to answer more than 70 percent of the question so it's not going to be a big deal at that part so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more self-help education videos like that and obviously share this video as much as you can to the social network so that other people know about the exam before taking it. Thank you.